Guys, there's so many great street epistemologists that are out doing the craft, doing the hobby, doing this wonderful thing of asking people what they believe and why they believe it. And I think Raul, Cardo Raul Cardona is one of the best of the business. And he has a, a YouTube channel called Street Knowledge. And we're going to go over one of his latest videos, see what tips and tricks I can learn. Because I think one of the coolest ways of learning how to do SE is watching other people do it and seeing what you can do. <laughs> <laughs> from all these other people who are doing it, what works, what doesn't work, and what we can do to uh, hopefully inject ourselves into the method, learn from uh, their advancements, and, and, and sort of just like wrap your own personality into it and make it your own. So that's what we're going to do today, uh, looking over this really cool video. So this one is called... Street epistemology, Joshua, the reliability of feelings. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Raul! Okay, my name is Raul. What's your hey. name? Joshua. Joshua. Nice to meet you, Joshua. Uh, can I ask you what you're studying here? Uh, business finance. Business finance. Okay, how's that going? Uh, good. Yeah, classes are all good. Okay. Semesters are starting up? Cool. How far along are you in the program? Uh, well, semesters just started, so... Like, Raul's one of the coolest people who are doing this. Well, the business yeah, man, that's cool. is only once a week, mm -hmm. so this, is, this morning is my second time going to the class. Okay. Uh, you're, you're a freshman? Mm. Okay. So why business finance? Uh, well, I don't want to do business in the future, but business will help you in the future. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to run a business, how a business operates will help you in the future. Mm -hmm. What I want to do personally is sports medicine. And so if I go into like a sports medicine type field, sports business will medicine. help me because if they need someone who knows how to like run that type of business, mm -hmm. like sports oh, okay. business company or something, then. At first, I was kind of confused. It's like, I want to run a business. That's why I'm going to sports medicine. I'm like, how are these things related? But I think he's got a plan. Go for it. Go for it, man. Okay, Go for it, Joshua. Me. Oh, okay. Sports medicine. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what would you be doing? Specific? What are you interested in doing as far as sports medicine? Uh, like, are, are you, like, thinking be a doctor type of thing or just? Mm, yeah. Doctor. Oh, okay. Wow. Interesting. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. <laughs> well, my first thing is I want to be an athlete. But then my backup plan, because I like I like biology in high school. Oh yeah, so I said, I want that's to cool. Yeah, medicine and then uh, sports with that, because I play soccer. Yeah. So I joined sports and medicine, so I game sure. sports medicine. Cool. Cool. All right, so um, today I'm doing an interview on epistemology. I have this hobby that's called uh, street epistemology, and it deals with knowledge, um, and that's like what people know, beliefs that people. So as he's doing this intro, I always like, to, when I'm doing my intro, I always like to gauge the initial body language of the person that I'm talking to. Do they seem to be guarded and like, you know, closed off, maybe facing away from you? Because it's always weird when you start the conversation. And then um, from time to time, I have a lucid moment. I try to check in on that body language. See, is this person getting more relaxed? Is it... <laughs> <laughs> is he becoming more comfortable or is she becoming more comfortable whatever may have you anyway hold and how they uh develop those beliefs how, how you establish that this this belief is true mm -hmm. and so you pick the topic um i interview people about some basic belief they have some foundational belief and we talk about how did you get there so something that you're really certain of some foundational belief that you you're really you have a real conviction of some high degree of certainty and the questions will revolve um, mostly around the how question. How did you get there? How did you establish that this thing is true? What what method, what, what route did you take to get there? You said I picked a topic? Yep. So just some deeply held belief that you're fairly certain of. It's... And I like that you're letting me think here. Anything or, I've, like, uh, some examples, I've talked to people about God. I've talked to people about other religious claims. Oh. Sometimes it's politics for some people. Sometimes it's um, paranormal slash like spiritual, uh, karma, ghosts, uh, you know, just something. These are the kind of things that people are, are convinced of uh, a lot of times, um, yeah, you know. I think it might be worthwhile for street epistemologists in general to show like how the how to not necessarily start the SC conversation, but show how to actually get someone to stand in front of you and talk with you because that could also be really interesting man we might have very different ways of going about that as well i know with my table setup it's a lot easier because people just come and sit down they're like hey what's going on over here and then they sit down right next to you <laughs> because they want to talk but when you're standing up how do you get someone to stop and and talk with them 
and maybe that would be kind of be cool. Like if we started the recording maybe about a couple of minutes earlier and just saw what was going on there, that might be interesting for other people to know how to um, start that up as well. Because I would have a hard time with that. But it, it doesn't have to be any of those things, you know, just just something that you're fairly convinced of that's kind of foundational to you that really informs like the way you live and the, the way you see yourself, who you are. Well, in that way, yeah, I would go a religious way. I would say that I believe there is a God. All right, look at the body language now. We went from, I mean, if we have to, we went from, you know, crossed arms to looking right at him to now crossed arms looking away. Remember when I said? You always gotta, <laughs> you always gotta look for that but yell. All right, so uh, let's see if this body language improves over the course of the, the conversation. One God. Okay. So there is a God. So you believe uh, a God exists? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are, do you believe in a certain God or is it just kind of... Jesus. Jesus. Great question to ask, Raul. Okay, so... Raul, like I said, is one of the best, and I'm going to start outlining. Here are my; those are my first two quick tips: uh, gauge body language, and then maybe in the future, I'd like to see how these conversations start. But let's see if we can start figuring out where we're going with this conversation. So we got to the God claim; God does exist. Raul clarifies, not only asking, not only asking, like or clarifying what he means by the God claim. Like, you mean a God exists, not just like. God is sort of like my claim. It's like, well, what do you mean? Like, God exists or not? And he says, yes, I believe it. God does exist. And then Raul goes on with saying, which God are we talking about? You mean like Jesus? Because you can say God as, oh, no, I meant God as love or force or God as, you know, the warm feeling in my chest when I hear Christian rock <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> but no, we are worse now. We know now that we're talking sp explicitly about Jesus which does two things, helps to focus and frame the conversation on a very specific God belief, but also helps to afford not to waste time in the conversation with someone who suddenly realizes that they need to shift the goalposts and start talking about a much more abstract or ambiguous God when they realize they may not necessarily have the best reasons to believe in that being. Not saying that they don't, but it tends to be the case when they feel gently challenged or cornered their idea of what a god is becomes substantially more ambiguous so it's good to define it ahead of time to avoid that let's see jesus okay um so so you believe in god um do you want to just maybe define what you mean by oh god i love you Ro. You, define you that god so double down there is a savior who came and created this world everything everything raul yeah. was saying on that on that slide is true <laughs> you're so good define he so he's making life. the ip okay. or the interview okay. partner so you double believe down that, on a what he means that jesus God. came to save the world and mm -hmm. if we believe in him we'll have eternal life all right so this is all just making sure that the terms are set on what god you are talking about that way we're both on the same page because god or christian specifically Christian can mean a completely different thing from this guy to this lady to any of these people back here it could all mean different things so it's important to verify what you're talking about when you say things like this it gives them the chance to think about what they mean when they say these very common labels as well labels that are used differently by different people just gives them the chance to clarify what he means when he says God because you're talking to him and you want to know what he means when he says the things that he says all right so we got a chance to double down. Great job. So why, why is this a belief you hold? Ah, well, love this question. I grew up in a Christian household, so it was brought upon me through that. All right. In my and head, I know. I, Raul, I'm going to give you a chance, but already I'm hearing argument from upbringing. Let's see if I got enough space here. Oh, I don't. I'm running out of space. Sorry about that, guys. So argument from upbringing. Let me take out, let me take out some dashes before my OCD kicks in. <laughs> so I'm already hearing an argument from upbringing. Let's see where we go from here. Like, as I grew older, as I kept going to church, and I pray on my own also, and then there's just this feeling about it that I have. Oh, I we got argument from feelings? makes me feel like that there's no way this isn't true. Like, there's a, like, the way, the way it feels like in the church, when you're all praising God, and then you're all worshiping Him and thanking Him, just like the feel of it just makes me feel like this wow. is real. 
Okay, so two arguments presented. One argument from upbringing. Uh, it, I believe it's true because I was raised to believe that it was true. And then we also have argument from feelings, which is I believe it's true because I feel that way. And both of these are not very great ways to come to absolute certainty on a God belief. Though I wonder if Raul will take this opportunity to one, either um, narrow down which of these two beliefs are the more important for his God belief, or two, try to establish some sort of confidence scale, uh, whether it's numerical or just in prose, get some understanding of how confident he actually is that this God belief is actually um, something this guy's committed to and by what degree he is. And then see if the methods that he's using this the excuse for upbringing or the excuse from feelings is good enough to support that high level of confidence if he has that. We'll see where he goes from here. I'm really interested. Okay. On a scale of zero to 100. Oh, he's so say, good. Is... We're thinking about the same thing. So for real, me and Raul try to do... <laughs> <laughs> me and Raul tried to do um, tag team SE once. It was it was kind of an interesting experience, but we think very very similarly on like the same level. So it's, I love, I love, I know what he's thinking when he hears these things. It's so good. All right. Anyway, let's continue. Is it something that you're confidence 100% scale? One percent certain of, or if you had to like quantify where you're at as far as your level of certainty that this thing is true. Hundred. Okay. Oh, perfect. I mean by 100, 100% oh, like, go, oh my God, <laughs> Raul, you're so good. All right, so. All right, so so many great things here. So uh, we got 100%, which is like one of the coolest things you can hear <laughs> as an S here, because it just means all of your options are available as far as like breaking down or at least exam or presenting things to think about as far as doubt. Because the easiest thing to, sh sh to throw out to a person who says they're 100 percent confident is do you know what it'll look like if you're wrong and if they say yes then there's that's showing an, an awareness that they could be wrong and or like a person that's 100 percent is not going to be open-minded to ideas of what it would look like if they're wrong but of course you have to define what you mean by 100 percent. i'm kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself i'm a little excited so how about this uh we got 100 percent what's important is to define what they mean by 100%. He just, and that's why he asked immediately after he said 100% what he mean by 100%. And he said, no doubt. Sometimes I personally take that further and I say, so no doubt you're not asking any questions at all. No, uh, you're, you're absolutely sure there's no way you could be wrong. Right. I'm absolutely sure you're like really just closed minded on the idea. Yes. I'm absolutely closed minded on this idea. People will say that. And as a result, it really makes it worthwhile to just define what they mean by 100%. In the same way as it's worthwhile to define what they mean by Christian or what they mean by what God they believe in, it's just good to make sure that you're all on the same page because it makes the follow-up questions and, 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 and follow-throughs a lot more straightforward and easy. Anyway, Raul, you're doing a great job. No, right. There's no doubt. Okay. No doubt. All right. And so what gets you to 100%? Is it... You mentioned uh, this this feeling that you get when you're like worshiping, when you when you pray. Is it gonna go to upbringing? And also motivation. So like I pray motivation. for the things, for well yeah I pray for anything that I'm going through, or like uh, I pray for blessing that I'll do well in something, or yeah it's those type of things and then that just gives me motivation like that goes beyond anything so that I will do well in whatever that is or he okay. will help me in whatever I'm doing. All okay. right, stay focused. So the feeling that you get when you're worshiping, when you're praying, right. and also the is motivation it, that you get. Is it feelings, motivations? Knowing that God is, you know, that he has your back. You can combine both of those things as just, hey, you have a lot of personal feelings that, you know, support your God belief. Like, now it's time for Raul to start to condense these, these, these beliefs into big packets. So that way, you know, it's easier to move through in a shorter conversation. Else... This guy is just going to go through one defense mechanism after the other and start bringing up, well, well, it was also because of my last time at summer camp and the thing that my mom told me and this fortune cookie I read that said this X, Y, Z, and it's just going to keep adding up. And the expectation is that you'll spend time trying to dismiss each side story rather than just saying, hey, fundamentally, all these side stories that you're presenting me are just different feelings that you have. Can we talk about feelings in general? 
and 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 see if that is a reasonable way to reach 100% confidence about anything especially a god belief and then if we find that it's not let's dismiss feelings and move on to the next thing that you brought up your upbringing or the next thing that you bring up maybe faith etc this is how you move through these conversations basically yeah. okay um how do how do these things establish that that this belief is true how do feelings and mo the motivation you get like how do, does that mean therefore god exists okay so we're challenging families I what you're saying. I think about look how he's saying. opening up his body language i love this still facing away but not ass crossed he's definitely thinking and this is a much better pose this too than this and he's giving him time to think pregnant pause here pregnant pause Oh, I love this pregnant pause. It's so long. <laughs> well, that, well, <laughs> oh, question, one of the best. I can't answer for sure because, like, since he's not, since he's not like a human form, I can't hmm. say like this proves that he's here. Like, I just have a strong feeling. So I can't. Okay. Yeah, I can't answer your question. That question, but like, he's not. I can't show you a physical form, but through yeah, like prayer and worship, I have a strong feeling. So I can't. Yeah, I can't. So then it would follow up. So you can answer these, but like then what's getting you to the hundred, what's making you a hundred percent confident then if, or give them time to like, you know, saturate answer on that, that idea. Question, okay. Let's do you think do. that these things that you mentioned, the motivation, the feeling that you get, do you think that these things can bring us to 100% certainty that something is the case? Raul, we are like, let me get, let me get on this. Raul, we were like, we are like. The brain is right here. That's these are exactly the trains of thought that I'm exactly on. Perfect job, dude, man. Well, I mean, even good the stuff. Worship and praise, like someone can still have doubt. So I can't say it'll bring you to a hundred percent. Like, if you go through those type of things, like church, and then you pray, and then you just have that hundred percent feeling that he's gonna help you in whatever you're doing, then like you can get. You... So no, he's not answering how does this make me certain he's repeating um the feelings that he has so the question is like how do feelings make you 100 percent? and is that a reliable way to get to 100 percent? and he's saying well i just have feelings that i'm 100 percent." and you know sometimes i go to church and i just have feelings that i'm 100 percent. and you know sometimes i talk to my mom and my grandma and they tell me about god and i feel 100 percent. it's like you are sort of answer the question but you're really just going off on a tangent and beginning what what Raul probably knows very well at this point, um, the defense mechanism that's that's being starting to kick in where you have an opportunity to answer a question in a straightforward way, but you realize that over that hill is a lot of uncomfortable territory you've not really treaded before. So you instead tread much more comfortable ground, even if it's one big circle. And so what we'll see most likely is Raul asking a question that refocuses the question back on the how the epistemology of how feelings can be a reliable way to come to a true conclusion i bet he was going to do it we'll be close enough to like carry out your daily actions through him but like to 100 percent, i can't say that's for everybody mm -hmm. some people will like always have doubts mm -hmm. they can't like see him in physical form but... he's appealing to the general too uh, appealing to general remember the questions are asked to him and so he's going to start to as his body languages indicate start to address people who aren't present to hopefully draw the focus away from himself and on to other people it's like why do you believe in this god based just on feelings well you know other people might might say that you know that's not good enough but you know i let them do whatever they want because I believe anybody should be able to do what they want. You see what he's doing? You need to make sure that's like, sure, but what about you? Because we're having the conversation between you and me. And why is that good for you to justify 100% certainty? You should be the authority of what you believe and why you believe it. Why are we talking about other people? Let's focus back on you. <laughs> yeah, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't say that everybody will get to 100%. Okay. I wonder if we had somebody from another religion who also cited these very reasons as, as what makes their God true. Maybe they said, um, I'm a Muslim or 
or a Buddhist or, or a Hindu or, you know, whatever it is, because of um, the feeling that I get when I'm in my temple or my mosque um, and because of the motivation I get um, from, you know, from that. If they were to give the, those reasons as why their God is true, do you think that would be sufficient to establish the truthfulness of their God? And that's called the outsider test of faith. It's what happens when you bring up a, um, a hypothetical third person who uses the same reasoning that your interview partner's using to come to a conclusion. But in this case, you they come to a completely different conclusion, something that's not compatible, like a completely different God. And if that person is using feelings to come to the belief that uh, the Hindu God's real, and you're using feelings to come to the belief that the Christian God's real, can you both be right? And if not, what does that say about the methods that you're using to reach 100% certainty that you're absolutely right? That's that's the basis of it. I like to do the coin flip example. You guys might have seen it before. But like, if I had a coin and I flip it and I catch it and it's on the back of my hand and I don't know the answer. And if you don't know the answer, isn't that the best answer? Sometimes I say that. I might throw that like earlier in the conversation. But then I'll say like, okay, so if someone said... Um, they have a lot of feelings that this coin is heads up. Does that mean that they're right? <laughs> could, it, could they be wrong? If they said uh, they had a lot of feelings that uh, the coin could be tails up, does that mean they're right? Could they also be wrong? Yeah, yeah. So, like, what does that say about as a method to come to a true conclusion? Like, and maybe, isn't, I don't know the better answer. I'd say that for a little, maybe towards the end. But a lot of different ways you can go through this. Mm. Good Crossed arms, looking oh. away, but he is thinking. That's a good question. Well, good question. One of the reasons Whoop. that I give for we me might make it through this video. It's like he's the only God so far that had in scriptures that said to come down from heaven and that help those and heal those around him. And so no other God has I, has done that and. You don't really see other religions try to Ooh. go out. How to does he know this? His word, like, don't don't fall God, for that. Their God's word, like Christians do. That's fine. That's another reason. Like, All right. Something has to compel you enough to go out and reach to other people, saying that if you do this, if you do this and do that, you'll be saved. Mm -hmm. that, like, don't fall for the bait. The, the bait is okay. my religion's better than those, other. Those are more religions. reasons that you're giving, and, and maybe we can explore those too. Don't fall for the bait. Make sure we cover the feeling and the motivation. Yes. And the, like the sort of the purpose of these interviews is to explore whatever method somebody uses to arrive at their conclusion. Is it reliable? Well, and so in this case, your your method it sounds like is is a feeling that you get um, when you pray when you worship. Um, that's Raul is so good. Raul, you're so good. The bait. All right, so look at the bait. Remember, appealing to the general. Every single time you asked him a question, he's like, well, listen, this is what other people do. Or like, hey, why do you believe in this God? Well, you know, I think my God is better than other people's gods, and we can talk about why my God's better than all these other people's God because my God reaches out to people. But other people's gods, maybe they don't do that as much. And all these other people are like... We're talking about you and the method that you use to reach your God belief. That the bait is for you to be like, oh, well, have you read up on these other gods? What about like a uh, Mormon God or like uh, Shiva and how many people they reach out? And have you read chapter four of <laughs> the Bhagavad Gita? Or, or what about in the Bible where it says, X, y, like, that's the bait because now you're beginning to pull further away from from his epistemology and talk more about his claims, his conclusions. And the the fault of doing that is you give him an opportunity not to think about how he arrived at his conclusion. The conclusion he has in street epistemology does not matter. It doesn't matter if he said, I believe in God. It doesn't matter if he said, I like potato chips. Like it's all, <laughs> it's all just a conclusion at the end of the day. What you care about as the s -er, as the practitioner, is how they arrived at the conclusion. And that should be the focus of the conversation. And if it takes uh, uh, if it takes you stepping back and saying, listen, what I'm really just trying to do in this you know, conversation is just try to figure out how you arrived at your conclusions. 
and that's really more of my focus so it's not so much about like the god belief it's more of like how you arrive at that god belief and if that method that you use to arrive at that god belief is reliable or not and you said before that you really appreciate feelings and motivations to come to a hundred percent certainty that something's true are feelings and motivations a 100 percent reliable way to arrive at that level of certainty and could they ever be mistaken can someone else use feelings and motivations to come to a conclusion that's not true and if that's the case what does it say about feelings and motivations as a reliable way to get to a conclusion because that's the focus of the conversation not the details of your god not the details of other people's gods but the methodology of how you arrive at that conclusion and raul like an ace like a well perfect expert is hitting it perfectly also raul's a very intense guy i seen his face <laughs> he's got really blue eyes and he and it's like hey man he's very he's very aggressively friendly too so it's like hey man i heard you like muffins do you want some i got them from your grandmother she's my next door neighbor she's really nice yo and it's very interesting. He's a very interesting dude. <laughs> I mean, just... Sort of. It sounds like that's your method of determining that this thing is true. Is that correct? Okay. All right. So is there a way to determine the reliability of, of feelings? As, yes. As a way? Raul knows. I'm not going to take the bait. I'm going to focus on the reliability of the feelings because that's the epistemology. That's the focus of this conversation. Of determining truth? Mm. I mean, for me personally, yeah, but like for another person, some people like don't get swayed just by emotions. So. Hey, buddy. Well, just to answer your question, just like not all the time that people will go by their feelings and claim you can't, you can't always go by your feelings and then. You can't always go true. by your feelings. Mm -hmm. We're just already started. I mean, for me personally, just in this circumstance, yeah, I just have a strong feeling from worship that there is a God. All right. That Jesus came to save us. But, like, your question, no, I mean, can't always face everything. Again. So then, what's some getting people, him to 100%? Mm -hmm. we're just, yeah, some people can't go by their emotions and then say, yes, 100% that I believe that there is a God. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, feelings are the best way to, to determine whether or not something is true? Some situations, well, some situations you can have feelings can be yeah. associated with your intuition too. Let me see. Let me they read can... this. If we can't always go by our feelings, how would you verify that our feelings? Yeah, that would have been. I would have been more like, yeah, that's more of the lines of my question. I'd say like, hey, so if we know we can't use feelings in all cases, like sometimes feelings can lead us to wrong conclusions and sometimes to true conclusions. What is making you one hundred percent confident that you are correct on this God conclusion? Like. That would, if we know it's not feelings, what's getting to that 100%? That would be the better question. But I don't think, Raul, that you lost a lot of time here. I think if you, I think if you just continue with this conversation, you'll hit this level very, very quickly. So keep going. You're doing great. And just tell whether something's true or false based on like how you, like the vibe you get from something, but not all the time. Okay. How do we distinguish between two people? who are each making a, their own claim about, let's say in your case, Christianity, and in another case, maybe somebody saying that their, their particular God exists. Both of you appealing to feelings. As the outside observer, do I have a way of determining which one is, is true? If they're both appealing to feelings as their reason? I don't, I don't mind this question, but I think Raul, you already established that he can back away from feelings. So if anything, we are just reassessing that feelings aren't 100% reliable by asking if we can test, uh, if there's a better way to test, and that why aren't we using this better test? Is there a better way to test if something's true than feelings? And if there is a better way, why aren't we using that as a way to know what true things are com rather than you know feelings which might be arbitrary or demonstrably arbitrary by his own admission? So, um, again, I think the shorter path here would have been, um, 
Is feelings 100% reliable? No, we know it's not 100% reliable because it's not good in all cases. Okay, so then what is actually getting to 100% confidence because it can't just be feelings. And then that leaves you to a lot of much more useful ground moving forward in the conversation because if it gun goes to upbringing, you can address upbringing and then maybe you'll eventually get to faith and you define faith and then you can work from there. It's pretty straightforward. Or he might say, well, I'm 50% this, 50% that. And then that brings up a lot of other, you know, um, uh, just quick questions that show that, hey, you just can't <laughs> add a bunch of different things together that aren't reliable and end up with a reliable, 100% reliable conclusion. So uh, anyway, I think you're doing great. Let's keep going. That's a good question because, yeah, like, in terms of, like, religions, there's no way to, because for the God, for each religion, you can't, you don't see them, so there's no proof for, like, there's no proof of, like, you knowing which one, just based on, like, it's just, you get a feeling, but there's no, like, I got a feeling. proof that will make you know which is right. So, mm. would he prefer physical proof? Might be a good question to ask. And then, if you don't have physical proof, or if you don't have meaningful proof, isn't I don't know a better answer sometimes? I'm not sure. I'm okay. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Is not it bad. possible for somebody to, be, to, be, to believe in a God because of feelings and yet be mistaken? And now we're back at that ground level again. This is like the lowest level we've reached before we keep cracking further down into this epistemology. I like to think about it, and I think Raul is the one who came up with this idea, is that SE conversations are sort of like... Let me, let me get myself up here. SE conversations are sort of like an onion. You don't just, you know, like it's not like an egg where you just crack it open and, <laughs> hey, I'm an atheist. <laughs> it's not like that. It's more like an onion where like you have to peel back layer after layer after layer after layer. And now we are finally getting to the point, actually two times in this conversation, where we're reaching the idea of feelings as a reliable way to come to a conclusion and whether or not they're a reliable method or not. And this is the best question to phrase or present this idea. So let's see where we go from here, Joshua. I'm rooting for you, man. For them to feel, because of their feelings, 100% certain and yet still be mistaken. Yeah, it could happen. Just like... Raul, like, you're so good. Okay, so I believe in Christianity, but then someone could have the same type of feelings I have and then in a different religion. Yes. But I think that they're wrong. Yes. Sorry if I'm wrong. Sorry if I'm wrong. What does that say as far as um, the reliability of of using feelings as a way of determining whether or not something is true? Raul, you are so good. Well, yeah, obviously you could be wrong or you could be, like, it could go either. Yeah, with feelings, you're not, you can't be 100% sure. Oh, I love you, man. Yeah. Oh, Raul, this is like one of your best talks. Listen, guys. Raul Cardona, his his channel Street Epistemology. Check this out. Look, Street Knowledge. My man's got 1.5k subscribers. He's been at this for years. Show this man some love. He's one of the best. He's one of the best. I learned so much from this guy. He's really really great. He's really really great. Okay, I mean it. So check him out. This is fantastic. All right, let's keep going. So where does he go from here? Where do you go from here? I say let it pregnant pause for a while. My my idea is uh, give him a chance to think this out. Let it pregnant pause, and then ask him what's getting him to the hundred percent. What's making him one hundred percent sure? He's still gonna say he's one hundred percent. In fact, you it, it's fine if he does. But if the more the more he holds on to one hundred percent, the more through this conversation it becomes very apparent to all parties involved that being one hundred percent confident. When you have no nothing that's that perfectly reliable to reach that conclusion, is an obviously un, not a good place to be. It's the equivalent of um, not telling someone that they're slow, not telling someone that I don't know. Like you could tell someone, "Hey, man, you uh, oh, I wish I had a really good example." You can play. You know French. Like, you can tell someone they don't know French, and they'll be like, I know French. How dare you? And then you could just 
show them like a French program that they don't understand at all and be like, I don't understand anything like that. Like they can't lie to themselves anymore when it's that obvious. And so when you present them the idea of like, hey, you say you're 100% confident, you would expect you would have 100% reliable method to get that confidence. Actually, you don't. You can't pretend to be 100% confident anymore. You realize that you're not. And that's what's happening in this conversation. And when you focus on just the epistemology and not, hey man, your God is blah, 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 or don't you know about this about your Bible? You avoid all those ego-driven responses or backlashes to the arguments you're presenting, the ones that make a person feel bad or make them feel dumb. And instead, you're working together with them to figure out, hey, is this, re- this, this methodology you're using reliable or not? We can look at that together and come to that conclusion. That's a very easy thing for both of us to figure out together. And if it turns out it's not reliable, it's not something that you could just pretend it is. Even when you walk away from the conversation, you're going to know, I have some questions I need to ask myself. And this is good. I think even this posture that he has right now is a lot more thoughtful than it was at the very beginning, where he was just more standoffish. Now it's like, geez, I got to really think about this. Ro, you're one of the best. Go either. Yeah, it could go either way. It could be, be wrong. Yeah, to answer your question, can't can't be completely sure. You can't okay. be completely how, how sure. How sure would you say feelings can make us? Now he's re now if he's not, reassessing one hundred percent. Then how, like, how sure do you think it can make us? How much can we <laughs> trust it to be leading us to accurate results? I had it written out. He's going back to the hundred. Pregnant pause into what's making one hundred percent. So now we're reassessing the confidence. I. Uh, Pregnant pause. Reassess. Let's see if he goes down. I bet he says 100. I'm still at 100 because, you know, yesterday I, I made some toast and I had Jesus' That's face on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I used to be there. I used to be there. That's why I'm saying that. I used to be right in Joshua's shoes, so it's all good. It's like, yeah, you can have a, you can have a strong feeling, but it doesn't mean. Look at this guy. Did he think he would have this kind of conversation or breakthrough today? Could you imagine if like thirty more people on this campus, just mm-hmm. thirty out of everyone on this school, knew how to do SE as well and were having these conversations with students? Could you imagine how amazing that would be? It's insane. Great pregnant pause. Going to the reassessing. I think there's another pregnant pause here. We'll give that pregnant pause. I see you, pregnant pause. Let's see. Is he going to say 100 or is he going to say something else? Oh, I've not seen this video, so over easy. I'm saying definitely 100. That's where my bet's at. I can still be at 100 because yesterday. I can say is sometimes you can be right, sometimes you can be wrong. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if we have this method, that can sometimes be right, sometimes be wrong. Do you think that that's the best thing to trust to lead us to our conclusion? Uh, some of it has to do, like I said, your intuition. It's like sometimes, hmm. We got argument from intuition almost, argument from the guts, argument from gut feelings. What's the one, one analogy that I think of sometimes is like a thermometer, mm. which tells us the temperature. And we might have certain ways we can come up with testing its reliability. You know what I mean? Like if we had a reason to believe that thermometer was not giving us accurate results, sometimes it predicted it accurately, sometimes it didn't. Would we say we can know with any high degree of certainty what the temperature is? Is this a? Uh, is this yeah. new? I'm not familiar with this analogy. Like, Raul, are you freestyling? I like or, it. I mean, read the question again. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to hear this because <laughs> the idea of this, these kind of interviews is method. Mm. Yeah. Method. Method mm. of arriving at truth. Right. What are you using to determine that something is true? Right. So the analogy of a thermometer is meant to demonstrate that, just like we might. Um, tr- test a thermometer to determine if it's le- giving us accurate results. You know, when it comes to the method of truth that your method of arriving at truth, 
how can we how can we test it to determine whether or not it's accurate i i hear where you're going with this you might want to workshop this a bit more and it, it took me a while to even come up with the coin flip so how can you phrase that so it, it comes out a little bit more smoother because when i say thermometer i think of like a phone app at this point <laughs> what's something else that we can test on a regular basis to make sure that this is still working i don't know uh is thermometer the best way to go about it or like maybe i Raul, you're showing your age a little bit because we're we old men and these are young kids on school. Like most of these kids probably have never seen a thermometer or held one in their lives. And if you had a thermometer, <laughs> you know, if you had an A track, right? And you hit the replay button because you're trying to rewind the first three hit singles by Tito before the before he left Jackson five. Uh, yeah, it's like people won't know what you're talking about. That had the same accuracy rate as feelings. Would you still trust that thermometer? I know kids that don't even know how to do or uh, make a call on a rotary phone. That's that's life today. I know kids who don't know who Tony Hawk is. That's real. Uh, that's rough. You got to workshop that. <laughs> I like the pose. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just say. All right, here I'm we go back. Say yes. I like this kid. You would you would trust a thermometer if it had the yeah, same, same rate of accuracy feelings. as feelings. Okay. Um, and what would that be? Is that like fifty percent of the time it's right, fifty percent of the time it's wrong, or is it like more more accurate than that? Would you say feelings ninety percent of the time it's right? Like is it mostly right or mostly wrong or fifty fifty or mostly right. Mostly right. Okay. So, so not hundred percent. How can we determine that? How can we determine that feelings has a mostly right rate of accuracy um. great way to phrase that good good thing I would have gone well I would have accepted that it was mostly right and said like okay so it's not 100% what's well, getting to 100% and that might trap me personally into him saying well it's feelings plus something else and then we'd spend time on the something else I feel like the fact that he's challenging feelings so hard here also that well, guy behind him take it back to Hold up. This guy's on his cell phone and walking outside. Man, you can't do that. So, I say for believing whether you should believe your feelings or not, the way I did it is I pray and then see what path it takes me in my life for. If I pray, pray around, pray about a particular thing, I see how he would help me in that situation. Post ad hoc so, relight, um, rationalizations go, here. Let's see. Post Probably can, also can with a mixture question? of bias. Uh, is it possible for you to have those very feelings that you're describing? Yes. So, like, again, we're getting more methods that aren't probably what he's putting a lot of um, weight into. And Raul is once again focusing, is focusing on the feelings because it's feelings that got him to the party is feelings the first thing he got he brought up it's feelings this is the same thing he's defending and Raul is fo staying focused on the target which is this epistemology that he's using not the excuses that are coming up as distractions but the core fundamental thing that he's bringing up again and again which is feelings uh Raul you're so good all right I said that so many times. Anyway, let's just keep and on. And yet, God still not exist. Uh, it's, it's possible. Okay. It's possible. So, if that were the case, if, how would how, we find out? How would you find out? I would have said, so why are you 100%? I think, how would you find out is the better way to go about that. I think there are roots, or like routes of reasoning that you can use. And I think Raul's taking the more optimal one here than I would take. Because well, I know... I wouldn't say there is. I know... Certainly. I generally know where my route of reasoning would go, but I think Raul's path stays focused on the epistemology a lot better, whereas mine would lead towards, like, arbitrary understandings of, like, different things 
and and not so much a complete like I'm I'm more focused on like the hey you're absolutely 100% confident you're probably closed minded my goal is try to make you not closed minded hopefully by the end of the conversation because why would anyone be closed minded and Raul is you said feelings we're going to attack feelings we're going to talk about feelings and by the end of this conversation we're either going to find out if feelings are worth keeping or not keeping but that's that is the topic because that's what I'm focused on that's what I'm out here for <laughs> and I like it I think that's a better way. I think that's actually the better way of doing this. Yeah, there's there's no certain way of finding out. We just just say you continue to pray and see. So he's bringing a prayer. How he changes your life. Argument and from prayer. You just decide if you want to believe from there. What is this body language? Let's going see. Yeah, on to here? answer your question. There's no like certain way. To there's find no out. certain mm -hmm. way to find out. Okay. Roll it up, bro. You do you got think it. that that that's an important thing to do? Like, in order for us to accept something as a hundred percent true or, that's or with it. some high degree of certainty, like, do we need a way, a good way, a good reliable way of determining whether or not it's true? If he says yes, and you don't have that, uh, yeah, whether whether that for you is having a strong feeling about it, or or you need a concrete way, yeah. Here okay. we go. And Last so. One for you, you're, you're trusting in your feelings and that gives you a pretty high degree of certainty. And and you're pretty certain that feelings is a good way of coming to your conclusion. I don't know for everybody, for, but for me, yeah. Okay. And and how, how did you determine that? How did you determine that this is a good way of figuring something out, figuring out if something is true? You got time, Raul. I don't know. I've just, I've just always trusted my gut, my feelings. About ah, things. gut instinct. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for it. Not yet. Yeah, not, that's not your style. Also, like, I Remember what I said. They keep throwing out things. things. Like the way the feeling I get from being a church. And, and we're going right back to feelings again. So stay way. focused on feelings. I just have this feeling that like, more feelings. That, that yes, there is a savior. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for somebody from another religion to have that same experience, where let's say? I feel like this takes a step back. Uh, I wonder if it, let's see. I have, let me see where we're going with this. Have we agreed that feelings aren't 100% reliable? Right, they aren't 100% reliable. Do we agree that it's important to, I think instead of taking the path of saying like, hey, can we, instead of test, isn't it important to test to our the the methods that we use to make sure if they're reliable or not instead of following that path it's mo could be more of like a maybe the better route would be hey um we so we agree that feelings are 100 percent reliable what's making you 100 percent confident that god exists and while and i know that's more of my approach it's it might bring up a rephrasing of what he meant by feelings it's like oh well no i still think feelings are still important because xyz is like and then then you can bring up this question because if he stays insistent that feelings are important then you can say hey well then is it possible that someone else can have uh, a similar feeling in a different religion and would that justify their god to 100 percent certainty like any god that they believe shiva you know vishnu um the flying spaghetti monster you name it right and if they back away from feelings and say, okay, well, maybe it's not feelings, it's um, my upbringing, then you can talk about upbringing. And if you find out that's not 100% reliable, then they can say faith. And then that's a question of def defining what they mean by faith. And they say, might say, well, faith is just trusting. And you can say like, hey, is trusting 100% reliable? No, of course it's not. Okay, so then what's getting to 100%? I don't know. And then coin flip, <laughs> maybe I don't know is the best answer. Shake hands. See you later. <laughs> That's typically my game plan, and I'm I could see I could see that route working here. But I'm interested in seeing how Raul's doing it because Raul's approach is, um, you said feelings. That seems to be your key epistemology, or at least the first thing you brought up. The thing that you seem to be putting a lot of weight in, to the point where you're defending it for like 20 minutes, even though we know and hit multiple times in this conversation that feelings are important. And so 
I think all Raul do, is doing right now is just reminding him so that he won't walk away from this conversation and use these excuses that he's throwing out now to, to fall back into the same pit that he was in before. But for him to say, for him to throw out some more excuses for why feelings are his number one, and then for a rule to, dis, to show why they're dismissible, have him dismiss it, and then have him throw out some more excuses for why he likes feelings, like literally 10 seconds after that, for a rule to say, okay, these are excuses and they aren't good. And then for him to be like, yeah, these aren't really good excuses either. I don't know why I said them. Well, here's some more excuses. And Raul's like, okay, we don't need these either. <laughs> and he's going like, yeah, we don't need these either. And maybe that will be the point where, you know, he can end the conversation. Because by that point, he will build enough momentum for Joshua to be able to do that himself. Realize, hey, all these things that I keep doing to bring feelings, these fundamental questions that Raul presented me, these excuses aren't dismissing that major question that he brought up. So maybe I don't need feelings after all. And if I don't need feelings, what is a reliable way for me to reach this God conclusion? That's something I do think about. Maybe they'll talk about this again in the future. But hey, someone was very raised interesting approach. a certain religion, um, who was brought up and, you know, going to a temple or a mosque or whatever. And they have these feelings associated with doing all that. Like, is, is is it po is that possible for somebody to have that experience and have the same feelings that you're describing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't say that they're right, but yeah, it's possible that they have the same. They grew up the same way, and they have the same judgment based on their feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think there's you'll no, just let me think like about a, this? Yeah, like I said, there's no certain way to see if you're right. Mm -hmm. So if but, there's no certain way to see if you're right, why are you 100%? Right? It, se it seems like feelings can lead to wildly different results. Raul's like in, hitting in your case, this it led so you to hard. Belief in your, your God. But, and then we talked about an example where it led somebody else to belief in a whole, whole different God. Mm. It, it sounds like feelings are very... Like with, with the results that they give are very different, random, different. Yeah, like would you would would you say that that's a reliable method? No, it wouldn't have been. Raul, don't go back to that. <laughs> don't go. Back. Don't go back to the thermometer. Stay on feelings. That's a lot better. I'd like this better. Well, for others, some people, yes, because can have a good intuition and your feeling can lead you to the right so other people know but then other people still, know again, there's no certain way to know if you're right or so wrong. then why are you 100 mm -hmm. so raul please sometimes yes sometimes no so why are you 100 percent? so sometimes feelings is reliable sometimes it's not right so why are you 100 percent? Mm. please okay no all right joshua ah uh! Thank Why are you 100%? Me. <laughs> Maybe he's letting it hang in his head. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So only thing I would do differently at that point is just be like, so why are you 100% using feelings? And it's not a, it's not, that question doesn't end there. Feelings. If we know feelings aren't 100%, reliable we might have gone to some interesting territory there i think if you threw this question out like around 14 minutes before we we looped back onto feelings again it would have been an easier thing to be like okay feelings let's just put this aside what else is there and then try to peel back more layers but i'm also fine with the idea of let's just thoroughly destroy the idea of feelings in a sense while showing how to peel back layers like teach a guy how to peel back his own layers by showing him how to peel back his most important layer i'm fine with that either way it's good raul you're so good and people you need to follow this guy i'm going to put a um uh, a link in the description please check out his channel please subscribe to this dude because raul cardona is one of the best in the se business and i am so happy to be uh good friends with this guy so that's my channel. See you guys 
next time i will keep doing more reviews of a whole bunch of different uh street epistemologists that i'd love to highlight and i hope you stick around for this because i'm really really honored to be able to show some of the great people in our community all right see you guys later bye oh there's my cat hey. mm -hmm. okay <laughs>